Hey everyone, I'm Wes. And I'm Savannah. Welcome to the Tiny Watts installation videos. Today we're going to show you how to install one of our standard solar kits. Let's jump into it. Okay, so we're up on top of a 144 Sprinter. Today we're going to be installing our 430 watt standard solar panel. And on this van, it did not come with the factory roof tracks. So we actually installed the Tiny Watts roof tracks. And that's what you're looking at here. So quick note about what standard solar means. Essentially, it just means they are non-walkable panels. If you're interested in having walkable panels, check out our Tiny Watts solar roof deck or our Tiny Watts solar roof box. All right, so we're gonna get started installing our standard solar kit. And what I have out in front of me here is all of the attachment hardware that came in the Tiny Watts phase one kit. So just a quick overview. I have three of my solar crossbars here which is what the solar will actually attach to. But first, we're gonna lay down the base, which will be these L feet here, using some oversized washers and some stainless steel hardware. For the Tiny Watts roof tracks, we have these stainless steel channel nuts. I'll show you how those work in just a second. And then over here, we have our hardware associated with attaching the rail to the L feet and then the solar panel itself to the rail. Okay, so just a quick little overview of tools that you'll need. I have a tape measure, a 532nd T-handle Allen key, Sharpie, some Loctite, and a 7 16 socket. You'll also notice we have already installed our cable glands. We have our positive and our negative. Those also came in the Tiny Watts Phase 1 kit. You'll notice I have a third cable gland because for this application, the client's gonna have an extra lighting feature. Essentially, this van is pre-wired for solar and we're now ready to install our standard solar panel. Okay, so first step, we just wanna figure out where we're gonna land the first rail. So I'm gonna take this L foot here and the way this works is the L foot is gonna attach to the Tiny Watts track if you had the factory roof tracks, it would attach to the factory roof tracks. But we wanna push this as far forward as we can. And then the, the crossbar will actually attach to this L foot. And I'll show you what that looks like next. So I got my L foot about in place where I want it towards the front of the Tiny Watts roof track. So I'm just gonna get a number. So I got about two and a half inches to the front of the L foot. We'll go off of that. So now I'll move the L foot, take the tape measure, and I'm gonna mark two and a half. This would also be the time to go and get your two and a half mark on the opposite side of the band. So we got our mark there. Now I'm gonna take a couple things. So we're gonna grab a stainless steel channel nut this is our attachment point. So this actually drops down in the rail. And then once it's in the rail, when we turn it to the right, it can only go so far and then it stops. So that will now be a secure attachment point inside our Tiny Watts roof track. So then we'll have our L foot up top, our stainless steel, bolt here with an inch and a half oversized, again, stainless steel washer. And we're gonna go through the L foot into that channel nut. You'll notice, you know, these L feet are designed to be installed either this way or this way. Obviously on a van, we care about being low profile. So we're gonna go with the low profile orientation. And seeing that there is this groove here, the most secure way to attach is to slide all the way forward in this groove. So we'll slide our bolt and our washer all the way forward. And then we can get first couple threads started in our channel nut, but we're gonna wanna make sure to put some Loctite thread locker on those threads before we install the L foot. Take the cap off of that take my bolt and put some thread locker here. Just like that. And then we'll go ahead 
line that bolt up with our channel nut. Get the first couple threads started by hand and then we can grab our t-handle get a couple more turns on there okay so you will notice we have a little bit of play this way before we're all the way tight um, we want the edge of this l foot to be flush with the edge of this rail that's a nice guide to go off of that way we make sure our l foot is installed perfectly straight so now that I have it there, I'm going to make sure I'm all the way lined up with my mark. So I have my Sharpie mark at two and a half inches and the front of this L foot is lined up right there. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down the rest of the way. Nice and snug. Super solid attachment point. So that's our first L foot. We'll go ahead and repeat on the opposite side of the van and then we'll get ready to land our first crossbar. Okay, so we have both of our L feet attached for our first crossbar. And just a little quick recap, we were two and a half inches back from the front of the Tiny Watts roof tracks. So I just matched that on both sides. So we have both L feet in the exact same location. And then we're going to take one of our Tiny Watts crossbars here. So this is actually solar rail intended to be installed on a residential roof or commercial application, which is good for a lot of reasons. One, it's a very clean aesthetic. This is black anodized aluminum. But two, I'll show you all the fasteners end up being hidden, which is really nice for a clean professional look when you're all done. But the most important thing is residential and commercial solar have very rigorous and thorough testing standards. And so this attachment hardware is rated for hurricane force winds up to 150 miles an hour, which is great because we're putting a solar panel on the roof of a van that's going to go bombing down the freeway. So you get a really clean professional look that is rated to hurricane standards, which is pretty awesome. So we're going to take our crossbar that came in the Tiny Watts Phase 1 kit. You'll notice here it's an aluminum extrusion with this bulb shape on the front. That will be the leading edge. So I'm going to take this crossbar, lay it across the tracks here. So this here is our square bolt because it's a square. And it's really a pretty cool feature here because it slides in the end of this aluminum extrusion and then bolts to the L foot. So first step will be take off this nut here. Comes with some thread locker on there from the factory. We'll go ahead and slide our square bolt into the end of the solar rail, just like that. And then we'll go ahead, feed that through the L foot. And then we'll take our nut and put that on the backside. And I'll just let that rest. We'll take our 7 16 socket wrench. There's actually two sizes here, but 7 16 fits out on the end. So I'm going to go ahead and get that snug, but not all the way tight. So code kind of hand tight on there. And what I want to show you, essentially we'll repeat this process on both sides of the van, but there is some adjustment here, right? So we can come up in that slot or we can go all the way down to the base of the slot. Again, we're on the roof of a van. We want to stay as low profile as possible. So it's really easy to install these at the same exact height on both sides because you just go to the bottom of the groove. Okay, so next step, I'm going to go over to the other side, install the square bolt just like this. So we're going to want to be centered on the van, which is pretty close to being flush with the edge of this L foot. So I got my other square bolt. I'm going to go over to the other side of the van and do the exact same thing. Okay, so I'm back on the passenger side of the van and I'm getting ready to tighten down that square bolt all the way. There's two things I'll point out. One, we're all the way in the bottom of the groove, so I'm pushing down on this solar rail. I'm not up at the top. I'm all the way down at the base of that L foot. And then secondly, I have the same distance here from the edge of rail to L foot on both sides. So I'm 
perfectly centered on the van. Now I'm going to take my socket wrench and I'll tighten that as I hold the rail down. Okay, so we got our first rail installed. You can feel it's a super solid attachment point and we're going to go ahead and repeat that process with a couple few things to point out for the other two rails. All right, so we're getting ready to install our second L foot. We're going to have three solar crossbars and we basically want them evenly spaced, but we want our farthest out rails to be within the overall length of the solar panel. Essentially, the solar panel will rest on top of all three of these rails. So it's kind of an arbitrary measurement, but I'll just take my tape measure here, find a nice number that will be about in the middle of where the solar panel will be installed. So I'm going to go 36 inches from the base of this L foot and give myself another mark on the tiny watts tracks. So again, for this application, we're actually doing a 430 watt panel. So I'm going to just measure from the base of this L foot. I'm going back 36 inches. It doesn't have to be exact. You just want it to be the same on both sides. And I'm picking a number that's going to be somewhere about in the middle of our solar panel. So 36 inches works for this application. We're going to go off of that. Now for the second L foot, we're still going to be facing forward here, so the L foot will install like this, having the rail attached just as it did on the front crossbar. We're going to take our thread locker with our oversized washer and our bolt, put some thread locker on there. Okay, we got our stainless steel channel nut. We're going to go ahead and drop that in the tiny watts tracks and then turn it 90 degrees. So now it will be a nice secure attachment point. And then we'll take our bolt, we'll kind of slide our channel nut into place. Take our bolt with our L foot, line up with those threads and get the first couple just started by hand. Then you can grab your T handle. Get a couple more turns on there. I like getting it pretty close to snug. Then I can make sure, again, that bolt is slid all the way forward in the groove of that L foot. And then I can make sure the L foot is positioned on the roof where I want it. So I'm right there at my mark. Now I'm gonna flush the outside of this L foot up with the rail. That way I know I'm perfectly perpendicular with my crossbar. Go ahead and tighten that down. So we got our second L foot in place. Okay, so we're gonna attach our second crossbar using our square bolt, just like we did on the first rail. So again, we've already done it on the driver's side with our square bolt here. Slide that into the end of the aluminum extrusion and then feed the bolt through the L foot before we take our nut and thread that on there. So we'll go ahead and repeat that step on the opposite side of the van and then we'll tighten them down all the way. Okay, so we have our rail, same exact gap that we had on the first rail. So it's about a quarter inch from the end of the solar rail to the L foot. So we know our crossbar is centered on the van. Then we can take our 7 16 socket and tighten up that nut. As you get close here, you can just make sure your gap is where you want it. And then also push the rail all the way down in the base of that L foot before you tighten it down the rest of the way. Nice and snug. Then we'll go ahead and tighten the other nut on the opposite side and we'll be done with the second crossbar. 
Okay, so we have our first crossbar, our second crossbar, and we're getting ready to attach the third. I'm gonna take my tape measure again. And I'm actually gonna measure from the first crossbar back. And going off of that location, I know I wanna be right at six feet. I'm gonna mark that rail, 72 inches. I'll double check that measurement from this centermost L foot, which puts me right at 30 inches there. So I'm about to show you why I picked that number for this installation. So we're gonna take our third L foot and you'll notice this is actually gonna be facing towards the rear of the van. So instead of it being forward, like the other two, we're gonna point it towards the rear. Just to attach that L foot, same process. We got our stainless steel channel nut. I'm gonna drop that in, turn it 90 degrees, take our bolt, oversized washer, a little bit of thread locker, and our T handle. Drop that through the L foot, get it lined up with our channel nut. First couple threads. Once we get close to snug, again, make sure that bolt is all the way, make sure that bolt is all the way in the groove of the L foot. And then we'll actually slide it to our mark, which is right here on the track towards the rear of the van. So I'm lined up, I'm where I wanna be. I'll hold that L foot so it stays perfectly perpendicular as I tighten this bolt down. Making sure to stay on your mark. Tighten that down. So the reason we have that rearmost L foot facing towards the back of the van is so when we attach our crossbar, we have the curved side facing towards the back. That's the side that you're gonna see, and so all the fasteners will be hidden underneath the solar panel. So, we'll take our square bolt one last time. Feed that through into the rail. Thread the bolt into the, into the end of the rail, and then thread that bolt through. Then we'll take our nut, thread that on, grab our socket wrench, keeping that same roughly quarter inch gap on this van between the end of the rail and the edge of the L foot. We'll hold the rail down as we tighten, nice and snug. What I wanted to point out is the placement of these rails relative to the overall length of the solar panel. So depending on what standard solar panel kit you've purchased, you'll get your length off the overall length of the solar panel. For this application, we're installing a 430 watt panel, which is 77 inches long. And we want that panel to be able to rest on top of all three of these rails. So I'll show you with the tape measure. So you can see I have my tape measure here resting on top of the rails. So I have the front of the tape sticking out off the front of that first rail, about an inch and a half, two inches. So there's our 77 inch number off the back here. And you can see I have, you know, about an inch and three quarters of overhang. Once we set the solar panel up on top of these rails, we can figure out exactly what that number is and make sure that the panel is centered. But essentially, if we're within one to four inches of the rail and the edge of the solar panel, we're in a good spot. 